The world of mushrooms have become a very hot topic. The research that floods our community continues to give proof to the benefits of these fruiting bodies, not only to our ecosystem, but to the health of you and me. The information surrounding mushrooms can be overwhelming, so I am bringing back to the show a very knowledgeable expert on this topic, Tom DeDant. He is the National Educator for Host Defense, which is a leader in mushroom supplements. Welcome to the show, Tom. Hey, thank you, Brian. It's great to be here. I really well, appreciate the opportunity. I appreciate you being here today because, you know, I wanted to bring you on today to talk really about three areas of focus. I want to talk about brain health. I want to talk about stress. And I want to talk about how we can increase our energy because these are the three things that most people complain about. You know, so but before we get started, though, I definitely want to dive into a little bit of understanding mushrooms and understanding the, the life cycles of a mushroom. So if you could, can you paint that picture of really what the life cycles are and how host defense uses the mushroom themselves? I'd be I'd be absolutely happy to. Now, what you've got to start with is you've got to start with the fact that what we call a mushroom is in, in mycological terms is mostly called a fruiting body. And so that's what we see pop out of the ground or grow out of the side of the tree. That's the fruit body of the mushroom. And it's basically the mushroom's reproductive organ. So it is not by any means the mushroom itself. Right. The mushroom is made up of what's called the mycelium. Now, the, the, here's the interesting thing. When a, when, a, when a fruiting body comes up, it releases spores. And those spores then will, they have to actually combine before they can start to grow. And once they combine, they start to, it, it's called a hyphae. And that hyphae starts to grow out and spread out and differentiate and goes out into what's called mycelium. Now mycelium is literally one cell thick, one cell after one cell after one cell, like a big long strand. And it's smaller than the size of a human hair. So it's, it permeates everything where the mushroom is growing. In fact, one of the things that it does is it will enter into the roots of trees and other plants around where it's growing and help them <clears throat> to get nutrients because it's digesting its environment. So, so if you think of the mycelium and, and humans, we have actually more co in common with mycelium and mushrooms than we do with plants. Yeah. One of the things that we digest our food inside we take it in our mouth and it goes down to our stomach and we digest it. The mushroom is just digesting it as it's growing out into its environment. That's so amazing. it's releasing digestive enzymes and those enzymes are actually fermenting what it's going into. So there's a fermentation process with the enzymes. Same thing that happens in our, with, with our food. We eat it, it goes down in our gut, it ferments and it, we get the nutrients. <clears throat> so as the mycelium grows out, when it gets robust enough and healthy enough, it will start to create what little, so they're called pinheads. And those are the little baby fruiting bodies that will eventually pop up and release spores so that the mushroom can continue spreading itself. So that's now, the stem that a lot of people see start to go above the surface of the ground, right? That, yep. And if you're fruiting body. Exactly. Now, and if you're growing it in a bag, like we do it, with, the, with the brown rice that we inoculate, and I'll get to that in a moment, um, you'll see little bumps come out on the outer surface of the bag where you say, okay, that's the mushroom starting. That's the organism itself starting to make the, what we call the mushroom. So it, it's, it, we get so locked into those terms that we, you know, even after being training on it for four years, I can still call the whole thing a mushroom. That's right. But, that's right. But so the, so the mycelium is the enduring part of the mushroom. And there's a, there is one mushroom organism. It's a honey mushroom in Southeastern Oregon. That's 2,300 acres one single organism, 2,300 acres, wow. and over 2,400 years old. That's amazing. So, so you know, that's the enduring part of the mushroom. Yeah. You know? I, I mean, mean, it's like it's always growing, right? It's always, Yes, and so imagine how many fruit bodies it's produced yes. in that 2,400 years. You so know, when you go 20, out to, say, one acre's you know, one acre of land in the forest and you see all these mushrooms popping up all over the ground, they could be all from one mycelium. They're, they're more likely them. all one group of mycelium. Yeah. Wow. That's, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. That's so, amazing the, so in, 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 you know, in use of mushrooms for nutraceutical functions, um, most people stick with the idea of, oh, we're going to use the fruit body because that's what's been used for centuries by, you know, ethnobotanical medicine, um, has used mushroom fruit bodies for centuries and centuries, even thousands of years, actually. Um, but interestingly enough, scientifically, they've started studying the, the entire organism and they found that 
there's more genes expressed, there's more compounds made, there's some compounds that are only made in the mycelium that are not available in the fruit body because the fruit body doesn't need it. For, for those soft fleshed mushrooms, you know, like a morel or something like that, that we love to eat, they don't, st the fruit body doesn't stick around more than a few days and then it decomposes. You go back a week later, you won't even find where it's been because it's completely gone. But the mycelium's still there. Now, the ones that appear on the wood, on, like on a tree, they'll hang around a lot longer because they're, they've got what they call a conch. And that conch is made out of um, what we call chitin. And chitin is a bunch of N-acetylglucosamine units. So we all, we all we're familiar with N-acetylglucosamine. Yes, it's N-acetylglucosamine units tightly bound together that give the mushroom its structure. They, they even work in the mycelium to give the mycelium its structure and its ability to penetrate things. Wow. Now that mycelium is sentient. It's cognizant of its environment. It can sense when it's coming into hostile territory and it starts making immune complexes. It can sense when, you know, what it's digesting and it can make the proper digestive enzymes. It's even got, like I said, it's got quorum sensing compounds that let us let it know, okay, somebody's walking overhead or, you know, all of this stuff is going on. So it's alive. Yeah. It's, it's alive. alive. It's absolutely and, and alive. Expanding. Incredible. And, and what's, what's fascinating about it is that when you stop and think about the, the planet itself and the planet's fertility, as long as you have the moisture and the, you know, fibrous matter that the, that the mushroom can be digesting as it's moving through the soil, it's also making it very wonderful for other plants to grow. So when your soil gets completely depleted because you're doing, you know, like big ag and looking at soil that looks like just dust yeah. and they have to just fertilize it so much just to get it to be beneficial at all, there's no mycelium in that soil because it's all lost. It's, it, it's got nothing to grow on. So that's, that's why, why that's why mycelium is so important for our ecosystem, right? Because like precisely. You said, it's, it's helping all those things grow. Yep, it's, absolutely. It's so so it's helping soil tilth. It's helping to break down all of the wood from forests and things that are falling down. So, you know, Paul Stamets, who's the owner of the of host defense mushrooms has a little, has a spot on an Island off the, the coast of British Columbia, Cortez Island, where he has an eco forest project where, you know, he tried to convince the lumbering companies that look, when you cut down the trees, don't, you know, scoop it all up and get rid of it. Let it all rot, let it rot, let it go back into the soil yes. and, the, you know, just inoculate it with mushroom mycelium and that'll do the business. Uh, nobody would do it for him. So he took his own money, bought a part of the island and has his own project there. That's right. Just, That's just right. to prove that this is really working and it is. It, so it the, really the, shows how nature is so connected, just like our health and systems of the body are. Everything is connected. Yeah. And, and, we, and we think we know so much. It's yeah, like, and we're going to come in, we're going to come in and we're going to fix it. That's right. uh, <laughs> we're going to make right. it more, mostly the, the thought is we're going to make it more efficient. Um, but, you know, when, to get back to the question, so a lot of companies have this idea that, okay, I'm only going to use the fruit body. And it's not that the fruit body is bad. That's people mis misunderstand us sometimes when we, when we say, no, we're a mycelium company. They think, oh, well, you think the fruit body is bad. No, we understand the fruit body is wonderful. It's got some great compounds. But most of those compounds, if not all of those compounds, are going to be found in the mycelium because that's where the fruit body came from. That's right. And it's a genetic expression of the fruit body that, you know, that the, mush the mushroom is saying, okay, I'm making a fruit body to release spores. So the mycelium itself under the ground is not going to be making spores, but the fruit body will genetically express what it needs to make the spores to per, you know, perpetuate that mushroom. And so what we, what we started, you know, what Paul started doing years ago, 40 years ago, was really looking at the mycelium and thinking, wow, I think there's got to be much more here in the mycelium than there would be in the fruit body. And then he, then he got this wonderful idea that, well, the mushrooms fermenting things and digesting things. And so you've got things like yogurt. When you inoculate milk with a lactobacilli, you get yogurt. It's no longer milk. It's changed. Mm -hmm. It's got some of the qualities of milk, but it's no longer milk. It's something different. When you take soybeans and you inoculate them with a specific fungus, they become tempeh and they've changed. And you've, you've changed the digestibility of that tempeh, that soy, which is normally hard to digest. And, you know, primitive cultures figured out in, the, you know, in Asia, you know, years and years and years ago, that if you ferment it with this fungus, you can, you can eat it and it's tasty and it's digestible and it's much more nutritious. So he started looking at, well, how can I grow these mushrooms 
I can't eat wood. We can't eat wood. So sure, we could get fruit bodies if we grow them on wood because that's what they're normally used to. But, you know, what about something else? So experimented around, experimented around and, and, and struck on brown rice, organic, certified organic, you know, no arsenic in the rice or anything like that. So people worried about brown rice. It's like, what about the arsenic? No, there's no arsenic in it. And that, those, bot, what we do is we get these bags and we fill them with rice that's been cooked in a pressure cooker. And we inoculate it with a tiny, tiny, tiny little, like maybe a third of the size of your little fingernail. Um, in with this, what? With, with mushroom mycelium. With mycelium, that's right. Yeah, we, we take the mycelium, we put that mycelium, just that tiny little bit in the bag. And that's enough for it to start growing out. And it grows out and grows out. And after a certain period of time, depending on the mushroom and how quickly its growth cycle is, it will completely consume that bag. And, you know, rice is, is two different starches primarily. There's, there's amylose and there's amylopectin that are the two starches that are measured when they're growing rice. And one of them is a really short chain polysaccharide. That's the amylopectin. The other one's really long chain polysaccharide that we don't digest. And so what happens is the mushroom will digest that easily digestible amylopectin and it'll leave a lot of the amylose behind. Well, now the amylose is a prebiotic. It, this, so this is, this is where it becomes brilliant because now you're taking, you're feeding the mushroom, the mushroom eats what it, it wants, the mycelium eats what it wants. It gets just about to the stage where it's about to make fruit bodies. So it's really robust. And you stop the process and you take that and you, you, you first you freeze dry it, which stops it. Then you heat treat it to make sure that there's nothing else, no other entities or anything else in there that you, you don't want. And then you grind it up into a powder and that's what goes into our capsules. Now, when you do that, you not only get those beautiful prebiotic starches that, that the mycelium leaves behind in the rice, but because it's been fermenting the rice, it's been using enzymes and creating what are called fermentation metabolites. And those fermentation metabolites have a bunch of really great compounds that are very beneficial to human health. So especially where they're beneficial is they're beneficial in balancing the immune response in the body. Yeah. And that's where mushrooms just start. They, they, that's where they go off the charts. That's right. The research is just incredible. And, and I really think that's why we're seeing an explosion in our industry, the health industry, with more companies want to do more fermentation as a base and things like that, because we're Precisely. understanding more and more of how it benefits our bodies, nutritionally speaking. And yep. so I'm a big fan of that. So let's, yeah. let's move that conversation to that point then. How does mycelium help me with brain health? Well, here's the interesting thing now. A lot of times what they've found in doing their research, if we'll, we'll look at the, what, what people like to call the smart mushroom, and that's the lion's mane mushroom, yes. right? The Heresia marinaceus. That mushroom has been tested to find out what its compounds do. do. And they, they have found so many different things that it does. But one of the initial things that they found with the research, especially in Japan, where they love mushrooms, they did research on the mushroom and they found that, wow, for some reason, it helps with anxiety and with depression. And so, you know, they did this little small human experiment, maybe like 40 women who were experiencing feelings of like anxiety. Their life was out of their control. They, they couldn't take care of themselves. They were upset. They, and they gave them little cookies made out of lion's mane. And within a month, they were all reporting improvement. They felt better. They felt great. They, and they realized that, okay, something's going on. And they, so they checked out what was going on and they found out in, in vitro studies, that's in test tube type studies, that what lion's mane, one of the compounds in lion's mane um, is creating a, a brain neurite outgrowth. So literally the brain is like regrowing itself. It's connecting that's better. Fascinating. I yes. love that. So and, and so imagine if, if all of your brain cells held hands better, you'd feel a lot better than if they were all ignoring each other or they couldn't quite reach out and get each other. So better so, connections, right? Better connections. Yeah. Yeah. That's and that's amazing. called nerve growth factor. Mm -hmm. And there's also something called brain derived neurotropic factor. Now, both of those are determined the way the stem cells that the body's making can differentiate into different brain cells to help your brain function more optimally. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's fascinating. It's just fascinating. So then where's our second brain? The gut. 
the gut and the gut. So they call it that because there are so many neurons in the, the in our gut, you know, so that basically what they found out is that lion's mane actually benefits the gut by being an excellent prebiotic mm. and helps our probiotic microflora <clears throat> flourish in our gut. And that in turn allows the gut to really just be alive. And so now we're getting great nutrition. We're, 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 we're protecting the gut from, you know, what we would call leaky gut and things like that. Cause they found that that's one of the things that it's good at. And literally that mushroom is, has just, has just taken off in popularity because people experience it. They did a, a big human clinical trial, uh, people between the ages of 45 and 85 and who were having cognitive decline, they were having, you know, issues. And they found that the, the lion's mane was very beneficial in those, you know, in, in that cognitive instance, yeah. as well as working well with the immune system. So, you've, right. you know, what they found is, is that the mushrooms are going to work on the immune system. And if you, if you work on the immune system, then you help the body respond, that immune system respond more appropriately. Mm -hmm. So you can have, you can have neural inflammation. In, you know, if you're, if you're experiencing a lot of stress or you're not getting enough sleep or things like that, bad diet, you can have inflammation that's just going on in your head that's affecting exactly. the way you're thinking or the way you're feeling. Yeah. And those are, those are immune messenger molecules called cytokines. And we heard about that, you know, during this whole pandemic, we've heard cytokine yeah. storm, cytokine storm. Well, those cytokines create inflammation in the body because it's part of our, it's part of our body's way of responding to cha those challenges. We, we have to have inflammation. But what they're finding is, is that the mushrooms have somehow the ability to keep that inflammation in a balanced way so that Modulated, it doesn't overreact. Yeah. yeah, modulation is the word. That's right. It's all about the modulation. So lion's mane is actually not just good for the brain health, but you're talking about mood swings and stress, right? Mm -hmm. and, and anecdotally, I mean, they did a research on it for people who were, were obese and they think, wanting to see, okay, could, could maybe this could help them with that. And they found that it, maybe not so much for that, but it really helped them get better sleep. Yeah. Yep. I, I believe it. I mean, lion's mane is definitely one of our more popular mushrooms here at the store. And we keep in our brain section and we get a lot of great compliments on it. Yeah. And I know Host Defense has their brain formula where you have, I think, uh, three mushrooms and three herbs in that product. Exactly. That there's so two other mushrooms you need to talk about. There's two that's other mushrooms. One, one of them's reishi. Yep. You know, and the other one is the, is the cordyceps because cordyceps helps your body get more oxygen and your brain runs on, it takes about 25% of all the oxygen you breathe. And so, the, you know, the better your respiration, the better your oxygenation, the better your brain's going to work. And the reishi is, is a fab, they call it the mushroom of immortality because it has this ability to work on almost every organ system in the body, but especially the cardiovascular system which is absolutely important because if you don't get enough blood flow to your brain, you're going to have another problem. So we've, we've got those three mushrooms together with the idea behind mycobotanicals was, is that we wanted myco the mushroom and botanical the herb, because we knew at the time, this was when we were first, you know, quite a number of years ago, we realized that people were still a little bit skittish about mushrooms because, you know, as a, as a kid, you get, you get told, don't touch that. Don't right, eat don't that. touch that. It's poisonous. Yeah. 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 So, so you start thinking every mushroom's got to be bad. Um, so what we did is we mixed some herbs that would be more familiar to people. So we chose a, a, an Ayurvedic herb called Bacopa and another um, Asian herb called Godacola and then Ginkgo. Now, you know, and, and we knew everybody would understand Ginkgo because by that time, Ginkgo was like a household name. That's and, right. you know, Godacola has been used by monks in Asia for centuries because it enhanced meditation. It enhanced focus. And so we figured, okay, if we're enhancing circulation, microcirculation to the brain with ginkgo, that's what the studies show. And if we're enhancing focus, if we're allowing somehow the brain to be able to be more one-pointed, and then we take the bacopa, which they, they've shown in studies to help you remember things. And in fact, in India, it's a story I used to tell a lot about it is, you know, in India, the number one or the number two herbs, the two herbs that are taken the most by college students during finals are ginkgo or are, are to cola and bacopa, mm -hmm. because it helps them remember what they just learned and it helps them focus. Yep. That's so we, exactly com right. we, we combine those three herbs with those three wonderful mushrooms. And we've got this product called brain, like you mentioned, that is, is absolutely formula. fantastic. Yeah. Awesome you formula. Know? 
I love it. I love what they did. So, and then some of those mushrooms, like you, we've already talked about lion's mane, that can sort of be crossed over into the other areas of our stress and our energy side too, right? Oh, absolutely. So I know, I know Host Defense has another product. I think it's Stress Decompress. Now, Am yeah, Stress right? Decompress yeah. Is, yep. is, is, is reishi mushroom. Mm -hmm. and it's lion's mane mushroom. And, and the reason reishi is in that formula is because it had it scientifically, when they've done studies, it sh they show that it's actually able to modulate the, um, the uh, sympathetic nervous system. So that's our fight or flight nervous system. Yes, it is. And it's, it's able to downregulate the signals coming in from that fight or flight system and help us be more in the parasympathetic or the rest and re it's, they call it the rest and digest rather than the fight or flight. That's right. So, so Reishi has shown that ability in lots of different clinical trials. And you combine that with the, with the lion's mane. And then you combine that with some lemon balm, which is a really beautiful, calming, soothing, you know, just very mellow herb. As long as you don't plant it in your garden and not expect it to run all over the place. Cause it's, a, <laughs> it's a rampant runner. Uh, we've, so we've got lemon balm and we've got, um, there's the, uh, lemon balm, ashwagandha and skull cap. There we go. Yeah. Skullcap's the last one. Yeah. And skullcap, it, this is American skullcap. There's two kinds of skullcap. Yes. There's a Chinese skullcap and an American skullcap. And American skullcap is, is wonderful because one of the things that it does is it relaxes the musculature in the neck and the shoulders where people tend to hold all that Stress. tightness. Yeah. So, so it's a, it's an absolutely wonderful, like muscle relaxant herb that helps people to just let go. And when you do that, you actually get more circulation. Right. to the brain, you get more circulation to the brain, your brain can actually go, oh, okay, we can relax. More oxygen here. too. Yeah. yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It benefits just trying to get all those muscles to stop contracting so much from all our yeah. stress that we carry. Exactly. Right. And, totally and stress decompress is one of those. It literally is, you know, the idea of decompressing. It, it's a really wonderfully named product mm -hmm. because it really does decompress that. It, it, you, you think of you, you're like, ah. <laughs> we have a staff member who who absolutely loves that product and we can always tell when she's not taking it but yeah. <laughs> you know we always say did you take your stress pill today you're a little tight yeah, today she, huh she's a big fan of it because it works great for her it's yeah been and, a it's, fascinating and product. it's it's a nutritive product too so i mean the, the, those herbs ashwagandha is a wonderful adaptogen um it's got some really great uh, cortisol balancing properties yes. that that will actually play right into because one of the one of the reasons reishi is so good at that sympathetic nervous system system down regulation is because it has that same type of a down regulating effect on cortisol. Yep. That's right. That's, that's which our stress major stress hormone. hormone. Yep. Yeah, that's right. Major stress hormone. So what about energy then? What if someone just wants energy, give us more energy, which mushroom should we be taking? For well, that? if you, if you're going to do energy, then you, you know, there, there are basically there's two products. One's just a mushroom only product and that's our corda chi and that's cordyceps and reishi. And that one is probably the most popular as far as our athletes are concerned because it's got the cordyceps actually helps you get more oxygen and reishi helps you make more ATP, especially in your heart muscle, which allows the heart to pump harder and stronger and longer, you know, without wearing out. And as long as your heart is not wearing out, you're doing great. It's like, you know, when you do exercise and you get your heart rate up to the point where it's like about to jump out of your chest, you'll wear out pretty quickly. Um, so, so you've got the, the ratio and the cordyceps. Now, when you go into the energy, the mycobotanicals energy, you've got, you've got the reishi and you've got the cordyceps and you've got some chaga because chaga has been shown to do the same thing. Russian weightlifters and, and bodybuilders and stuff swear by chaga because they love the fact that it gives them all this energy. And then you'll take that and you combine it with Eleutherococcus, and you combine it with rhodiola, and once again, and once again, <laughs> you, have a you have a synergistic blend of those herbs I, I know. together yeah. again. Yeah. Uh, so what was, you're doing is yeah, you got green tea, green tea. Yeah, green, that's right. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a, at the present moment, I'm a shooing, a shooing caffeine. So it's probably why <laughs> I, it's um. So with the green tea, you've got the, these wonderful antioxidants, the EGCG. Okay. And that EGCG is helping your body to just, you know, take care of all of the stuff that you're creating while you're doing all this exercise, you're getting more oxygen. One of the other things that cordyceps does really well is it lowers lactic acid buildup in the body and urea nitrogen buildup in the body. So those are the two compounds that will cause you to cramp 
and have, you know, so post-exercise cramping and physical discomfort. Cordyceps has been shown in many different studies, both animal and human, that it helps to reduce that. It will also enhance testosterone production. Now, some people go, you know, like if you're a woman, you go, well, I don't want testosterone. I don't need testosterone, but it's not outside of normal ranges. And women have testosterone too. They have to. Yep, it's, right. it's, it's part of the physical makeup of the body. So it enhances testosterone production, which is a good thing because testosterone builds lean muscle mass and lean muscle mass burns fat more effectively than fatty marbled muscle tissue. So you want that lean muscle mass that testosterone helps you to build, especially if you're exercising. So you've got this beautiful product, gives you more oxygen, helps to keep your muscles from getting crampy, helps you to build more lean muscle mass. And at the same time, you've got the reishi in there working on heart energy and working on lowering that sympathetic nervous, that fight or flight response, lowering the cortisol that you're obviously going to build up by lifting all those weights or running or everything. So, you know, it's, it's a, it's a wonderful formula for people. I take it every day, as a matter of fact. Yep, it is. I mean, chaga is one of my favorite mushrooms personally. I, I was yeah. taking, drinking chaga way before it really became a supplement. I was ordering the big bags of the bark to come mm -hmm. in and I would have to steep the process and so forth. So I tell that story a lot when in our mushroom podcast, but I think it's important that chaga really does have so many different things for the body too, as well. It's not it's, just it's for that probably, energy immune. I love yeah. it for so many reasons. It's, it's probably one of the highest antioxidant mushrooms that they've studied. Yeah. And, and the, the amazing thing is, is that people think that the chaga, the, the conch that, that comes outside of the tree, that's not actually a fruiting body of the mushroom. It's just the mycelium of that mushroom that is pushed outside of the tree and then hardened. So really? it's, so yeah, it's really called mycelium. A, yeah, it's called a sclerotia. Wow. And so when I was getting that conch in the bags, I was really getting mycelium, not the fruiting body is what you're exactly. saying. Exactly. Very interesting. Exactly. So that's, that's mycelium in disguise. I like to tell people it's like yeah. mycelium in disguise. And the interesting thing is the fruit body of that particular type of mushroom, um, it'll live in those birch trees or alder or some of, you know, those type of trees for years and years and years, sometimes 50 years, but eventually it, it will kill the tree. So it's a parasitic mushroom. Eventually it'll kill the tree. When the tree dies and falls over, that's when the fruit body comes out. Really? After the tree dies? After the tree dies. The fruit body won't come out until the tree dies. And then what it'll do, it's underneath the bark and it will push the bark up okay. and release the spores. Wow. And when it does so, it, the, part of the way that it releases the spores is the, the insects and the birds and everything in the forest where those trees were, go crazy over the actual fruit body. And so they're scattering spores everywhere while they're feasting on the fruit body. You know, I just fall in love with mother nature more and more as we learn more about how it works. It's just incredible. Oh, well, and when you think about that, it grows in the circumpolar region around it, you know, around the North pole and it's absolutely essential for the health of the forest. It's just, yeah. it's, it's an amazing mushroom. Exactly. Very interesting. Well, I know we're going to get this question, Tom, so I'm going to ask it. We have our stress decompress. You yeah. have your brain formula. You have your energy formula. Can someone take all three together if they wanted to? Well, I'm living proof of that. But, <laughs> <laughs> um, what I like to do, what I like to do in the morning is I'll take the brain and the energy together first thing in the morning. And I'll, I only take it once because, you know, it, for me, it's, it's a great way to start the day. And then if, you know, if the day gets to be a little bit, you know, wound up, I'll do the stress decompress later in the afternoon, because what I want to do is by the time I'm ready to go to bed, I want to have my body just kind of mellowed out and say, okay, now we we're putting behind yes. what we were dealing with today. And, but it's, but the nice thing about stress decompress is it's not a sedative. So yeah. if somebody goes, wow, you know, I'm going to have a really rough day at work today they can take a couple of stress decompress before they go into work. They're not going to be drowsy. They're not going to be sleepy. They, they, they can operate heavy machinery. They can yeah. do all that. Well, let me ask Tom, since you're trying to get off coffee, do you think it's helping you able to do that? I do. Really? So I do. Yeah. So, substitute for someone to try to, who's get wants to get off the caffeine. Absolutely. Well, what, what's interesting, I think, Brian, is the fact that, you know, you get used to the buzz, you get used to the caffeine buzz. Yeah. And so you, you, you think I need it. I need it. 
In fact, you you know, it is it's an addictive. It's it's addictive. It is addictive. Yes. And so, you, you, you know, I get up in the morning, I get dressed and I'm thinking, OK, I'll go out and get a cup of coffee. And then I'm like, no, you're not going to do that now. We're going to we're, we're trying something different. And the, but, you know, then you have this little discussion with your brain, but I want it. It's like, well, yeah, but we're not going to have it. I'm not going <laughs> to do it. <laughs> and so after about four or five days, what I'm noticing is now I'm really feeling the energy and the brain That's when right. I take it, because it's not masked by that push of the caffeine. That's right. That stimulation that most exactly. people are really going for. You're, you yeah. have more of that modulation now. So now you get the, the afternoon low a lot easier and not the exactly. big crash, right? Yep. It's not the crash and it's not the feeling of like, oh, now I got to go get some more caffeine in me. I hope I don't take it too late because then I know it's going to keep me awake and this kind of stuff. That's right. Yeah. So it's a, <laughs> it's a great way to combine those. And what we found from, from the clinical studies that have been done on mushrooms, especially host defense mushrooms, because we're one of the few companies, if not the only company that actually tests our products in these clinical trials and in, you know, in vitro trials, we want to know what are our products doing, not what the mushroom itself is doing. We know there's lots of information about that, but we want to know what's our product doing. And so, you know, really and truly, when you, when you start looking at those trials, um, you start to, to get a real sense of confidence that, okay, these mushrooms know what they're doing and these products are working and we know they're clean. We, we, we go beyond the pale as far as doing, you know, quality control analysis just to make sure. And, and we're doing what's called it's solid state fermentation. What, you know, that's why we have the brown rice. We, mm-hmm. we don't want to, uh, I'll give you an analogy because there's another form of mycelium where you grow it in a, in a vat of liquid and it'll grow out and you can put things in the liquid to make the mycelium have greater content of certain nutrients. If you want fortification type. Yeah, exactly. But then they pour the liquid out and they keep the mycelium. So what we tell people is that, you know, if you're a beer drinker, for instance, that's like, you know, pour out the beer and keep the mash, (laughs) you know, which is not, 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 it's like belly up to the bar and have a nice big bowl of mash. (laughs) Can I, where's my beer? (laughs) (laughs) That's a great point. And I I do want to reiterate that, Tom, because I think it's so important why I, I personally love host defense is to, thank you make sure people understand the difference that your company really is about this mycelium. And yeah. that's where the research and studies are really showing where a lot of that, like you said, DNA and genetic profiles, more nutrient dense type things are really made at where a lot of other mushroom companies are using it after it's sprouted and fruited into a fruiting body. So yep. I think that's very important for people to understand. That's what host defense is all about. It's the mycelium. And so, so much research and, and it's more and more reasons to not be scared of mushrooms anymore. Right. Well, and, you know, and again, to, to take it back just a step for, for your employees, for instance, um, when somebody comes in from another company and they're trying to sell their product. And so sales are sales and you've always got to come up with something that you can talk about. So a lot of times uh, because, you know, a lot of mushroom companies get their supplies from one raw material supplier. Uh, and so the raw material supplier will usually give you your ad profile. OK, this is the way to sell it. And so for a long time, people have been doing iodine testing. Well, they'll take a, one of our capsules and they'll open the capsule and they'll pour it in some water and then they'll put a couple of drops of iodine in it. And if the, if the water turns blue, it indicates the presence of starch. Okay. And so the, <laughs> the idea is, okay, see that capsule is full of nothing but starch. It's just a filler. There's nothing really there. Well, you know, we were, because we, we talk about it a lot. And, and, and I was doing some research with one of my other colleagues and we realized that, okay, wait a minute, when they, when they're looking at rice and they're testing the two different starches in rice, they use iodine to tell which starch is there. If it's amylose, which is the one that's a prebiotic, it'll turn the, the water with the iodine, it'll turn blue. If it's the amylopectin, which is the one that we could digest and stuff like that, it's going to turn the water purple. Mm. So these guys have been all this time, they've actually been doing us a big favor by saying, hey, look, they're <laughs> been showing capsules you. full it's of prebiotic. <laughs> <laughs> Just another reason to trust host defense for sure. Yeah. And that's what we love about your company. Tom, Thank you're you. always a joy to talk to and so much information. Brian, yeah, it's I, it's, well, it's like old homie talking to you again, Brian. I'm, you know, Without a doubt. 
pandemic or not, you know, it's it, at least virtual reality allows us to still share time. I agree. We're blessed by that for sure. We can keep educating viewers out there and people who really want to learn about how to better their health, you know, through mushrooms, especially Yeah, mushrooms, I think is definitely our future in so many ways because we're seeing it already with all these companies starting to use a base of some type of fermented mushroom now. Yeah. So, well, and I, you know, and more and more, you, you've got mainstream doctors that are coming out with mushroom products because they're like getting on the bandwagon. Yeah. And that just speaks to what mushrooms do for people. It sure does. Ryan, I mean, when you look at what mushrooms do for the planet, that's right. Where, where you can, you can detoxify waste oil, motor oil, waste motor oil with oyster mushrooms. That's right. And, that's you know, amazing. Yeah. yeah, I've heard about this. Is not there some studies with mushrooms and trying to get rid of oil spills as well? Oh, too? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, when, when they things. had the Gulf oil spill, um, one of the things that happened was that the um, Paul went to him and said, look, I've got a way to clean up all this oil that's washing up on the beach. And they said, oh, you know, and the oil that's floating in the water. And they, you know, I think it was BP said, nah, you know, we're just going to put a chemical on it. It'll make it sink down to the bottom and then it'll be out of sight, out of mind never mind what it does to everything exactly. that's down on the bottom and how long it lasts there. But what, you know, later on in San Francisco, there was a, a boat that had oil in it that, that ruptured and tore the side and it was going all along the, the shoreline and some very imaginative hairdressers realized, well, Hey, you know, all these barbers are cutting all these people's hairs. They're, they're throwing all this hair away. If we just take hair, which absorbs oil really well, and we put it into bats and we lane those bats along the shoreline and the oil washes up, the bats absorb the oil. And now you inoculate the bats with mushroom mycelium wow. and the oil gets decomposed. It gets digested and it goes away. Genius. I love it. That is fascinating. <laughs> that was a good way to get rid of it for sure. Right? Absolutely. These oil companies need to know those things, you know, yeah. especially with accidents are always going to happen. So much cleaner, more efficient, more nature like yeah. of getting way of getting rid of our spills. So I, I think, like I said, it mushroom is going to be endless in what we're going to see in the future yeah, for sure. It's, it's just the tip of the, <laughs> just right. the tip of the mushroom. <laughs> well, Tom, thanks so much, buddy. I really appreciate it. I you really appreciate it, Brian. My, my pleasure. Take care, all of you, and good health. You too. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Healthy Approach Podcast. Be sure to subscribe if you like this podcast and help us spread the word by rating and sharing with your friends and family. If you'd like to learn more about the mushrooms we talked about today from Host Defense, go to sunflowershop.com. That shop with two P's and an E or visit us at one of our two locations in the Dallas-Fort Worth area.